Okay, so hot exhaust gases which enter a fin tube cross flow heat exchanger at 300 Celsius and leave at 100 Celsius are used to heat pressurize water at a flow rate of 1 kilograms per second from 35 to 125 Celsius. Assuming that the heat capacity of water is constant and equal to 4200 joules per kilogram Kelvin, so this guy here is the C sub P, right? And we know that varies with temperature, so that's why they're asking us to consider this guy constant. Oops, constant. Um, the exhaust gas specific heat is approximately 1,000 joules per kilogram Kelvin, and the overall heat um, transfer coefficient based on the gas side surface area is 100. So this fellow is also C sub P, and then this guy, it's the overall heat transfer coefficient. So we know that's U, well they say it's U here, but can be sure to you anyhow. So this guy is taking into account the convective resistance from the gas to the tube, the conductive resistance due to the tube, the convective from the tube into the water, and also if there's any fouling factor or anything like that. It's also being taken into consideration in that number that was given. The correlation between effectiveness and NTU is shown in figure one. We are to determine the required gas surface area using the NTU method. So this whole problem is around finding what is the surface area for this heat exchanger. Figure 1 is showing us the effectiveness of a cross-flow heat exchanger with both fluids unmixed. Okay, so this graph is showing us a heat exchanger that goes like so. From cold, it's going through like so, while hot, it's going through like so they don't mix they're just exchange energy and we have a relationship between the effectiveness and the NTU and the capacity ratio all right so let's first start by drawing our little simplified um, heat exchanger now for the NTU method it doesn't really matter much if we do um, if we do parallel or counter, okay, in this case here they are 90 degrees with each other. So this drawing here only makes so much sense. Okay, the, the only thing is usually parallel is just easier for us to see. There's just one small problem with it, and I'll show you what that is. If you were to draw this, you'd still solve everything, would be you get the same results and all that would not change number wise. But there's a fundamental problem with this, which is a falling. Check out, if I do this in parallel, what happens is we have uh, heat flowing from hot to cold like so normally, but then here it would flow on the other direction, right? So this would be a terrible, terrible um, heat exchanger in which at some point we would have the inverse energy going inverse to the what we would like, right? This doesn't really happen in heat exchangers. What would happen is that they would converge to a single value. So just because of that, it doesn't really make much sense for us to make them in um, in parallel. We know they're cross flow; they're not parallel or counter. They're cross flow. So just for the sake of our drawing, I'll just do them like so. Okay, so it's 35 over here, and 125 over here, and then we have 300 and 100. So note that now the heat flows like we would expect. So from this guy to this guy, this guy to this guy, and all good, we're cooling down our gas as we go. Brilliant. Now we also have uh, the mass flow rate of water that's been given to be one kilograms per second, that's all good. We also been given the C sub P for water, and that is, what they give us, 4200? 4200 joules per kilograms Kelvin. Then we have for the gas, we also have C sub P, and that's a thousand. But we don't know the mass flow rate, right? So when we go over here to calculate the capacity rates, let's do that in black, the capacity rates for them. So the capacity rate, the big C capital C for um, water, that's straightforward, right? That would be just a thousand times 4200, so we can do 4.2 times 10 to the third. That'll be watts, excuse me, watts per Kelvin. But then when we get to do this one, we're missing the uh, mass flow rate to multiply there, right? So we need to find that mass flow rate first to be able to find the capacity ratio, sorry, the 
the um, capacity rate. So with that we can do um, which one is C min, which one is C max. What we do know is that the energy that's flowing out of the hot is going into the cold, right? And then since we can't destroy, create or destroy energy, we know the mass flow rate of the hot times the CP of the hot times the delta T for the hot has to be equal to mass flow rate of the cold, CP of the cold, delta T of the cold. Note that we have everything except the mass flow rate of the hot, so that should be straightforward for us to calculate, because this will be a thousand. This will be, what is it, 300 minus 100. So that will be the 200 just there. This is 1. This is 4200. And this is 125 minus 35. Okay. So note things are going, unit-wise, everything's going to cancel out except the mass flow rate of the water, so that our final result when we get the mass flow rate of this guy will be the same as the unit for the mass flow rate of water. This is 42 times 90 divided by 200 and 1,000, so this is 1.89. Cool. So now we're going to go back here and then we can put, okay, so this is 1.89. So therefore I can calculate now my um, heat capacity for, sorry, capacity rate for the hot. And I'm doing this in black, and this turns out to be this 1.9 times 10 to the third once per Kelvin. Now, and th at this point in time, we can determine which one is the largest one, which one's the smallest one. So this one automatically becomes max. This becomes min, and then we can go on with our NTU method. Okay, if you guys recall, our NTU method, what we're trying to find is the area. Where is my Okay. We're trying to find is area right here. So to find area, we need the um, overall heat transfer coefficient, we, which we have already. We need the capacity rate, the smallest one, which we have already, and we need the number of transfer units, which we don't have. So if you want to find the number of transfer transfer units, we're going to be using this graph for which we need the rate between the capacity, the ratio between the capacity rates, excuse me, and the effectiveness. Okay, this is straightforward for us to grab, we, just, we have both of them, just divide them up, find the ratio. The effectiveness is what we're missing next, so let's just start by doing the, um, the ratio between these two fellas. So that will be C min divided by C max, which is just 1.89 divided by 4.2. There's no units, the units are the same, so this is 0.45, right? 0.45, so that's one of the things we need to find the NTU. And the next thing we need is the effectiveness, and we know effectiveness is the relationship between the actual heat that's being transferred and the maximum possible we can get for this uh, specific uh, heat exchanger. So in this case, we can choose whether, we want, since we have both hot and cold completely defined, we can choose whether we want to use hot or cold, Really, it's up to whoever is solving it. However, note that if we choose to use the one that is the minimum, in this case the gas, we are going to simplify our maths. Because check it out, we know that this guy is going to be Simon times delta T max, right? So on, on the upper one here, we can choose to do mass flow rate of hot times CP of hot delta T of hot, or mass flow rate of cold, CP of cold, delta T of cold. But if I choose hot, if I choose hot, we do hot CP of hot and delta T for hot. What ends up happening is that this guy is exactly the same as this guy, right? Because they're just the bottom one's just a multiplication of these two guys here, so they go away. Um, so which means that this becomes simply put just 300 minus 100, which are the temperatures for the hot, divided by the maximum we can possibly get, which is the input of the hot minus the input of the code, which is 35, right? And that turns out to be point, about 0.6076, so 76%. Okay, that's the effectiveness of our heat exchanger in question. So now we can use these two values here. So we're going to combine this information that we have gathered, and then we're going to jump into the graph, and we're going to solve not solve, find what is the number of transfer units for this case here. 
All right, so now I'm using this on the tablet, so it's very hard for me to make straight lines. So do my best. Okay, we know this is right here, this is 70. And we want 76, so I'm off completely, sorry. We want 70, so it's going to be of this fella here, so like around here. Okay, and now the ratio between the two is 0.45, so that's going to be somewhere between these two fellas here, right? 0.5 and 0.25. And then what we do to find it is, let's just complete these by hand, and we take the 90 degree angle from one to the other, and we would have a behavior that is something like, let me just go, let me just complete this right here. You would have a behavior that's something like so. Cross these guys here, right? So we're looking for 0.45, so that's going to be way closer to our uh, 50, so somewhere around there. If we go down, so this line here is for 2, so that will be some, something around here, right? So that we can call that what? 2.1 or 2? 2.1 is good. If you're solving this and you got something around 2.1, 2.2, or 2, that would be fine. You got that margin just there. So if I have my NTU from the graph, I have my NTU as 2.1 or any value around that, then I can solve my area, right? Because we know just rewriting this equation here, right? we know NTU equals the surface area times the coefficient divided by min so therefore my surface area would be my NTU times C minimum divided by U so let's plug in these guys we have everything we need my NTU is 2.1 my C min is 1.89 times 10 to the third and my overall heat transfer coefficient is a hundred 100. Unit-wise, what do we have? Unit-wise, there's no dimension to NTU, so that just stays there. This guy here is watts per Kelvin, and on the bottom there we have watts per meter square Kelvin, which conveniently and not coincidentally leaves us with unit for area. So I got 39.69 square. Okay, so that will be our answer for this problem here. Questions, you can just leave a comment or just shoot me an email.